This presentation is a faithful reproduction of the original that was presented by Katsuhiko Akiyama in the United States of America about 12 years ago in 2008. Patient agreement for this presentation was obtained after a completely explanation was given. Leonardo da Vinci was one of the greatest artists in the world. Mona Lisa is famous for her beautiful smile. Today, I will make a presentation about aesthetic, soft, And her tissue around the mouth, especially natural teeth. I will also reveal the secrets of Mona Lisa's beautiful smile from the standing point of a dentist. Was Mona Lisa's smile divided right side and left side? Some people said that. Mona Lisa's smile was divided. Her, the smile, is a woman's, and her, the smile, is a man's. Leonardo da Vinci drew pictures to display human beauty, golden proportion. I imitated Leonardo da Vinci. The right side picture is a chart of aesthetic treatment. In dentistry. Today, I will consider aesthetic treatment using a microscope. If we think about the beauty of teeth, we have to study movement of the lips. Because if we can see the teeth, the frame is the lips. We have to study the relationship between. Teeth and the lips. I think about the harmony between the teeth and lips like Leonardo da Vinci. How can I display the beauty of the soft tissue and the hard tissue around the mouth? Considering closed lips, the Mona Lisa's lips are very beautiful. There are three protrusions. On Mona Lisa's upper lip, the closed lips are a little down in the center. What makes this? The teeth make the lips shape. Collect teeth position make the lips beautiful. Especially tooth number six, eight, nine, and eleven. Influence the lips shape. The tooth number eight and nine makes make cross lip a little down in the center. Pre also treatment, post orthodontic treatment. The shape of cross lips is influenced by the positioning of the teeth's roots. Roots portion is very, 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 very important. The ideal tooth portion makes the shape of lips beautiful. These lips are similar to Mona Lisa's lips. Today's subject number one: the relationship between the teeth and the lips. Subject one: the relationship between the teeth and lips. Number one: the movement of the lips. Number one: the movement of the lips. The smile mouth shows us two curves: one in the line of the lower lip, the other is line of the maxillary teeth. If the two curves are sympathetic with each other, the smile is very, very beautiful. This is my treatment. 
the movement of the lips. If we watch the teeth, they watch the lips at the same time, of course. We have to think about the movement of the lips, so I study the muscles around the lips. Number one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. The muscle shows us the movement of the lips. Basically, muscles attached to the distal of the lips. So, the upper distal moves the upper lip, and the lower distal moves the lower lip. The peak of the upper lip is near the canine tooth. The ratio of the upper lip's peak is a 3 to 5. This ratio is the golden proportion, like Leonardo da Vinci. There are four peaks of the lips. Two peaks are in the center of lips, and two peaks are near the canine teeth on the upper lip. Subject 1, the relationship between the teeth and the lips. Number 2, the relationship between the lower lip and the maxillary teeth's arch. The smile mouth shows us the two curves. One in the line of the lower lip. The other is the line of the maxillary teeth. If the two curves are sympathetic with each other, the smile is very beautiful. This is my treatment. After treatment, very very beautiful smile as you can see. In this example, the lower lip and the maxillary teeth are not sympathetic, not beautiful. So after treatment, two curves, so two sympathetic curves make a beautiful smile. This is same my treatment. The lower lip sympathetic with the maxillary teeth makes a beautiful smile. Title is the right. Thank you for your kind attention.